what's up guys and welcome to this second video in the series on coding in Haskell um, in this video I will show you how to install stack um, and I'll show you just very briefly uh, how you can use it and how the interactive environment for the Glasgow Haskell compiler works now I know in the last video I said that I would go over installing it on a clean installation of Ubuntu. However, I saw that it has gotten extremely easy to install, so I, s I see no reason to actually spend time on that. Uh, what you do is just to do Google Haskell uh, stack or go to this link. And then there's uh, very simple instructions right here. Like if you're on a Unix-like operating system, all you need to do is just run either one of these commands. Uh, I think you have to install curl if you're on Ubuntu, for instance, at least the minimal version. But after you do that, just run this command and it will download uh, everything for you. And then once you have stack installed uh, to actually download the Haskell compiler, just type, uh, for instance, stack GHCI and that launches the interactive compiler. But if it's the first time that you do it, uh, it will download and set up everything first on your computer before um, for actually launching it. Yeah. So uh, before we start coding a bit in the interactive version of the compiler, let's try to see what Stag is about and how you would uh, set up a new project with it, for instance. Now, there will be a few videos before we actually um, set up a new project and everything like that, or, you know, do something with the project that we set up. But I think it's just a great way to, you know, quickly show you know why stack is great and why it can be useful so in order to exit the interactive environment just type colon q and then let's say that we want to um, may start a new haskell project you type in stack new and then the project name let's just call this one proj right it will download a bunch of uh, templates uh, template files uh, that it will uh, what's it called? The, they will uh, pre-populate your new project with. So if we cd into that project, you can see that uh, you have some files. Like uh, basically, it assumes that you want to, you know, push it to GitHub, uh, and so it gives you a git ignore file. There's a readme uh, markdown file, and then there's test folder for the test for your project there's a license and then there's the yaml and cable files that basically uh, contain snapshots of uh, as we talked about in the last video so that this build uh, is so that the build of your project is actually reproducible uh, a year from now or more of course and then basically inside the source folder that's where you would uh, make develop your application and so on Everything else uh, is more related to the executable files and whatnot, uh, for instance, inside the app folder. So let's say that we want to set up the sandbox uh, compiler environment in here. Just type stack setup. Uh, sorry, stack setup. And see, it says stack will use the sandbox GHCI installed. This means that if you installed any packages inside of your project here, it will not interact uh, or interfere with uh, st uh, what's installed outside of your project. So basically on the system level or even the system level stack uh, Glasgow Haskell compiler installation. Okay. Uh, so what else? Um, okay, let's say that we have some code in here and we want to build the project. Type in stack, build, let it run, creates the executable file. Type in stack, exec, exec, proj, uh, dash, then exe. And we'll print some funk because some funk is some code that's in the source folder whenever it's, um, you know, the templates are downloaded. And then 
what's next yeah if you want to install a package we'll talk more about this in a later video also when we actually need something that's not part of the standard library you type in stack install and uh, it could be a bunch of things um, vrec is uh, http library for instance um, but we'll, we'll look at that later and then it will also update the yaml files um, as well so let's say that we want to do a bit of coding inside the interactive environment you launch it by typing stack ghci and it will open up this uh, prompt where it says prelude right next to your cursor now prelude is part of the is, is a subset of the standard library for haskell and you can change this to whatever you want you should type in colon set prompt then do something i don't know like that um what else you can exit colon q you can let's say that you look up a function and it could be the sum function and types are very important in haskell and we'll talk about that later too but so you can see the type definition for sum if you type in um if colon t right uh, and we'll talk more about uh what this means later on you can do basic arithmetic in here like you know from uh, another interactive compiler like uh, python's compiler right you can sum a list uh, we can do all kinds of things now let's say that we um, have a new haskell um, file and we want to import the functions in that file into the interactive environment in order to test the functions we can create uh, actually i have already created one it's called touch.hs and you see in here basically there's one function that takes uh, two integers and it outputs uh, an integer also and it's called add two it takes two arguments uh, x and y and adds them together all right so if we go up into the interactive environment again and we type in l for load or small l for load then type in tut dot, dot, oh, yeah, dot hs you see that it will change the thing next to your cursor here to test uh, implying that you've correctly loaded in the um, the module and so just to confirm it we can test it by saying add two and then giving it two integers like 10 and 10 and we see that it outputs 20 we can also once again check the type declaration like so and see that it corresponds to the one that we set in our module okay so i think that will be it for this video now in the next video we'll actually just get started on doing some coding and i'm thinking i will go over it um, sort of you know cover some basic stuff inside the interactive compiler to begin with and then we'll uh, start a project and kind of tie everything we learned uh, together and so i'll see you in the next one